Good morning and welcome to the Earth and Tree Miniatures and Dollhouse Store located in Amherst, New Hampshire. We are open seven days a week online and in the store for your shopping pleasure. Today we're going to talk about installing a canopy here onto a ceiling light. So we can put this right into the tape wire without any extra wires hanging down. You won't see a big plastic plug and you also don't, um, you're able to remove it. Canopies make the light removable if you change your mind, if you're redecorating, or if you need to replace the light bulb, it makes it a lot easier. So first thing, we've picked a little light right here. Um, just a single bulb light fixture from Miniature House. We're gonna open the package right up, take it right out, and we're going to get rid of the packaging. Make sure the light fixture works. We're gonna plug it into this outlet. Yep, okay, the fixture lights up. So, next we're going to figure out how long we want the light fixture. So, we're going to hold it up to the ceiling and see how long we want it to hang down. This one's really far too long right now. So, we're gonna pretty much cut that just about in half. That's much better feasible length. We don't need it to be hanging halfway down the room. So now that we have an idea of how long we would like it, we can go ahead and get our pair of scissors here. Now, if this is the length we want at the ceiling, we need to go a little bit longer because we need enough wire to actually go through the canopy adapter. So I want to go about mm, just about an inch. A little more is okay, you can always have a little extra. And go ahead and just cut the wire right off. Then we have all this extra surplus of chain here. We need to open up this jump ring. It's connected to kind of the canopy that comes with the actual light fixture, but we're not gonna use that. We're gonna remove that right off. So I've opened up the jump ring just by pulling it open with the needle nose pliers. Set that down and take off the canopy and the wire we're not going to use. And now I can adjust the length of the chain. So we're going to put this jump ring back in a pair of needle nose pliers. And we can hook it to, I think right about there will be good. Set that aside. That's going to be going on to our actual canopy adapter. CK800. This wires right on to your fixture as your new adapter, making it directly connect to the tape wire. So out of this package, for our application, we only need the actual disc that goes in the ceiling and the actual adapter. The other parts and pieces are in here if you're using a different type of installation. If your tape wire is on the floor above and you need to wire through the floor, then you might use some of the rest of the components in here. But our tape wire is directly on the ceiling in the room that we are wiring. So we only need these two components in the package. And there are, you will notice, in every package, lovely illustrated instructions as well. So if you need any clarification on what I'm doing, you can definitely read through the instructions or send us questions either way. So pulled my little jump ring off here. I'm going to hook it back on and then we're going to hook it on to the canopy right here pinching the jump ring closed. I'm just using my fingers. You could use two needle nose pliers if it doesn't work really well with your fingers. Right there, just getting it so the ring is closed. So it's no longer open right there. Okay, now you can see we have enough wire to kind of go through and we're going to be trimming that up. So we've attached the jump ring to the chain and we have extra chain that we need to remove. So we're going to just, I'm gonna use a little metal snip wire cutter. You can also use a needle nose pliers and just pull the chain apart, but this way I just snipped through it and the extra chain just came right off. Now I need to feed the wire 
through the hole in the bottom of the canopy. You can see it sliding right in there. So it comes out through this center hole right here. I'm going to let the canopy go down a little bit because we need to work on the wire. So there's two wires in one seamed insulator here. We're going to snip those wires apart very carefully with scissors so they come into two pieces like this. Pull them apart so we can work with the two separate contacts. Now we're going to take insulation off. I like to use my fingernails. That's why they're all broken and gnarled and cut because they're my favorite tool. Um, you can use the back side of scissors, um, the back side of a box cutter, anything that has a blunt edge that's not going to cut the wire. But we're basically, we need to nick through the insulation like this, just so we've separated. It's hard to see because this wire is kind of the same color, but you can see the shinier part in the middle right there. That's where the break is. Now I need to twist this insulation around because there's five or six separate wires that will just fray and stick out. Um, so we need to twist the insulation as we're taking it off because you can see right there even I didn't get it all the way twisted so there's those separate wires so I still need to continue to twist them together. It's easier to twist with the insulation though. So we're going to do the next side. So try to keep the insulation on there as long as you can to get it all twisted. So again a little break in the insulation right there and then twist the insulation, twist the insulation. I know it seems kind of excessive but trust me you'll be thankful in the end. Okay, so now we have the wire coming through the adapter, just long enough right there. So we need to lift up the two little screws down here in the adapter. I have a really small screwdriver. If you don't have a really small straight bladed screwdriver, eyeglasses screwdrivers work. You can use um, a box cutter or a craft knife to get into this little slot. So you just need to loosen the screw a little bit. We're not taking it all the way out because it's really hard to put back in. So just a few turns to get in there so we can get the wire underneath. I don't know if you can see in the video, everything's the same color, but this is lifted up a little so we can get the threads, get around the threads. I'm going to use my tweezers here, grab one of the wires like that, push it down and get it underneath the plate. So I want it actually where the threads are. See how it's hiding underneath the plate? Get the other wire out of the way. So I don't want it up above. I want to tuck it, there we go, underneath there. It's hiding underneath the plate. So I'm actually around the threads of the screw. That's where we want it to be, completely concealed under there. And go ahead and tighten it up. So nothing comes out, pulls out, or snakes out. And we're going to do the same thing with the other one. So we're making sure there's no exposed wire because if there's any wire that can touch itself in the middle, that, that would cause a short. Oh, you can see my frayed wire sticking out because I didn't twist it quite enough. So I'm just using the tweezers to kind of tuck it under there. Pull it around to get it tucked under there. So when you can't see it, you know you have it in the right spot. And then tighten that up down there. All right. Well, there's a little bit of wire showing right here. So I can lift this up if I think I didn't get enough contact. And I can push that back under there just a little bit more. It was probably good enough, but I, I like to really exercise caution. I don't like to have to do these twice. Just make sure it's underneath. There we go. Now we got it. There we go. So now we don't see any exposed wire. Okay, so that's part. That's the first part. We have the actual adapter to the light. And there's a little extra wire here. I can just kind of push that up in there. And I can also kind of twist it like this. So it doesn't show up as much. There we go. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, in order to attach it to the actual ceiling, this is the second part that comes with the kit. This is the disc. We 
Um, they don't sell these any longer, but we still have a few in the store that we use. So if you come to a class or you have us install your lights, um, we use these to put the little adapter and be nice if people made these again. But if you don't have a tool like this at home, you can easily just use a chunk of strip wood, half by half, even quarter by quarter, just, you know, an inch or so long, and you can just stick a little wax to it. So if you have that stick, just stick a little wax to it like this. You just need something to hammer against. So by having that piece of wood, it would be the same thing as holding this, and the wax would hold it in there. So um, in order to know where we want this to go, I've got a tape measure here and I've got a pencil kicking around somewhere. We're going to measure how wide the room is. So we're going to butt the tape measure into this wall and then check over here at how wide. So we're just about 15 inches right there. So we're going to make a mark. Half of 15 is seven and a half. So we're going to make a mark at seven and a half up here on our ceiling that tells us middle of the room okay now we are going to figure out how to get camera to see what i'm doing next so the tape wire is right in there in the ceiling and i've done a little testing ahead of time so i'm going to take my test probe right here i've already taken the cap off there's a bulb in the bigger end on the bottom and there's two pins right here stick out when the two pins contact the tape wire it lights up so we're going to it takes a couple tries because i'm trying to look through my phone there we go so you can see once you're in the tape wire this one's not staying lit up very well because at the moment my test probe is overused. Once I have it in and once it's turned on, I want to take my pencil and I'm going to mark right where the actual pins are coming through because that's where I'm going to nail, where I'm going to hammer the little nails in from the disc. So I want to mark both, both spots like this right there. So when I take my test probe down, I can see my two pencil marks. So when I line this up right here, I am lining up with my two pencil marks, just like that, okay? And then, we go off camera for a second with the hammer. We are back, so we have the disc right in there, and we are going to take the lamp. It has, so the two screws kind of lock in like the top of a Tylenol bottle. You kind of have to feel it go sink. So when you put it on there, you feel it kind of sink in like, I'm spinning it around until it feels like it's going in. This one's giving me a nice little hard time, of course. Once you get it, there we go. And well, it wants to go halfway. So you're feeling for it to sink in there. There we go, and a quarter of a turn. And we have no power, of course. We always like to show you how it's not working. So we're gonna test right here. Oh, there's power in the actual adapter. I'm getting it to flicker and light up. I had it flicker. Okay, so we've got power in the adapter, so that's making contact, and our wires should be good to go underneath the adapter. So the bulb could be loose, or our screws could be just not making a very good connection. Let's see, let me check the bulb here. Oh, well, it's not the bulb. All right, so it looks like we have to troubleshoot our wires a little and I'll... All right, me again. Pretty sure I figured it out. In the little canopy adapter here, there are two silver um, contact pieces down the bottom and they seem a little too flat to actually make good contact with the screw. I was able to make contact with the test probe because I could touch them, but not with the screw. 
So what I need to do is get a tweezer in there and actually just pick them up. And this is something I've been seeing more and more in the newer ones. The company circuit has changed the design and it's not proving to be as foolproof as the last ones. So this, this flat piece in here needs to actually be lifted up so it can make an actual contact. So to get the tweezer in behind there and actually kind of bend it forward. Now you can see that it's not laying flat. It's actually bending a little. It's hard to see in the video, but the top one there has got a little crimple wrinkle in it. And we got to do the, the same with the other one. So I'm just trying to get my tweezer behind it. There we go. I'm just kind of manipulating it, kind of crimpling it. All these wonderful technical terms to try to get this a better contact. Sorry for my big hands in the way. There we go. So now we have the, um, the silver tabs in there that make the contact. They have been kind of pulled on and lifted up and everything. So we're going to go ahead and hammer it back in the holes. And then I'll join you back in one second as soon as we've getting it back in. So let me just set the camera down for a minute. And since I pulled the disc out of the ceiling, I'm going to put it in new holes just, just to the side of it so I'm not using the same the same holes that are already open. I'm just going a little to the side so I'm using fresh brand new holes. Hammer it in with a hammer. Nice and in there. And we are going to... And I haven't tested this, so we're going to learn together if it worked this time. Yay, we have full contact. Oh, we had good contact. There we go. Okay. So now we have the light, and it's in. We quarter turn twisted it on there, and it's removable, so we can switch it to another room or anything we need to do. And you got to learn a little troubleshooting and problem solving on top of it. Let us know if you have any more questions or if you liked our videos. Thanks.